My name is Robert Campo. I own this oyster boat, I have another oyster boat, and I also own Campos Marina right here in Shell Beach. 116 years ago, Robert Campos' grandfather started farming 1,500 acres of some of the finest oyster ground in the world, shrimp too. The balance of salt water and fresh water makes it all possible, but that is changing. This place is, is golden, man. It's golden. And they're turning it into complete crap overnight. Take it easy there, Barney Oakfield. The oysterman is upset over a state <laughs> plan to redirect Mississippi River water in an effort to rebuild this disappearing part of the country. The marsh has been eroded away by sea level rise, naturally sinking ground, and these long, straight canals down there. Those are those straight lines that were dredged for oil and gas exploration. Those canals are just highways for the salt water. Messing with the delicate balance of fresh and salt water here. David Muth with the National Wildlife Federation says mud could fix Louisiana's land problem and there's plenty of mud in the Mississippi River. So right back there is the proposed cut into the Mississippi River to let that silt and all sorts of organic material pour out and build a new delta. And that would spill more fresh water into Robert Campo's golden oyster bed he has reason to be concerned. This used to open to the Gulf of Mexico, right? Absolutely, straight out, 20 so you miles. you salt water coming yep, in? Yep, But no more? No more. Hurricane Katrina nears its third landfall. In the years after Hurricane Katrina, the Army Corps of Engineers dammed off this massive canal known as Mr. Go. The year after that dam was put in, the dam dammed us. <laughs> That's exactly what happened. Still getting some very, very strong northerly winds. The plan was to protect New Orleans from incoming storm surge, but cutting off the salt water had unintended consequences. I'm going to show you what fresh water does to a salt water estuary. It's catching what used to be oysters here. It's all dead shells now because of fresh water. You're looking at dead oysters. And, this, and at one time was just, man, this was just a, this was the place to be. It was incredible. Not one, not one, not one live oyster in this, in this whole dredge. But that's a huge industry right there. It is a big industry. It's a very important industry, and nobody wants to see it go away. David Muth tells us fishermen will have to move to saltier grounds after this fresh water comes pouring in. People like Captain Campo will have to adapt to the changes. So some places where you could get shrimp in the past, you might not be able to get it after this project is built. That's correct. There'll always be shrimp. They might be somewhere else. How much more can we adapt to? If we adapt to any more, we're out of business. Yet moving an operation like this is really easier said than done. You don't just move the boat. These oystermen, crab and fishermen, they have a whole community set up here. Their homes are here. Their docks are here. Their gas stations are here. You would have to move all of this to the other location that's good for oysters, crab, and shrimp. Like I said, the shrimp industry, the crab industry, oyster industry, you're talking about billions of dollars a year in industry that's gonna be lost. Coming up in part three, just how much money are we talking about? Billions of dollars in fish, billions of dollars in construction to reroute the river? Where is all this cash coming from? We took those questions to the Louisiana State House. Billions of dollars. God help us if we waste it. God help us. We'll never get this chance again.